I recently put out a video about my new air compressor setup and this video popped up on my feed so I decided to make another video as a supplemental so that you can actually see the breakdown of this particular compressor that we got. Hi, my name is Larry and I'm part of the product development team here at California Air Tools. I'd like to share with you the features and benefits of the California Air Tools ultra quiet, oil free, dual piston pumps and motors. In front of me is our half horsepower model. We use the same design on a half horsepower, a three quarter horsepower, a one horsepower, and a powerful two horsepower model. These air compressor pumps and motors are used on our ultra quiet and oil free air compressors. Okay, the way that they're presenting it is out of convenience, but realistically, if you have a piston motor, you want the lubrication, you want the heat transfer, which is going to equate out to longevity. We utilize an oil-free pump system. The reason we use a, utilize an oil-free pump system is it requires no maintenance, no monitoring, no disposing or refilling any oil. With an oil-free system, you're allow, allowed to use in cold weather. Okay, with the cold weather reference, not relevant today because of the greatest synthetics that we actually have available. And un uneven surfaces. We have a dual piston pump system. We use two large pistons that displace the air quickly so that you have a quicker recovery time and a quicker fill time. Okay, for you motorheads out there, as you can see, they got a twin cylinder large diameter piston. So this could explain the high volume, low RPM, and low PSI capability. Okay, for you non-motorheads out there, I got a little animation that will help explain bore, stroke, and displacement. Okay, your bore is going to be the diameter of the piston. The stroke is going to be the total distance the piston travels from the very top to the very bottom. Calculating the displacement is taking the volumetric, which is usually given out in cc's or cubic inches, and multiplying it by however many cylinders the motor has. We have a cylinder ring. Okay, here we have the cylinder, and you can clearly see the diameter of the piston, which the diameter looks longer than the actual cylinder length, meaning it's going to be longer than the stroke. So it's going to be a short stroke motor. Big piston, short stroke motors typically need a lot of RPM to produce the output. Let me show you what I mean. Let's call this picture a short stroke motor, and then let me do this. And what we can see here is clearly that the length of the diameter of the piston is longer than the stroke. Now these compressors operate at about 1700 RPM. So we have a short stroke motor at 1700 RPM. Now if all things being equal and the only thing that we changed was this, here you can see how we would have increased the efficiency of the motor and increased the volume per every stroke at that same 1700 RPM. Okay, looking at the green shaded area, we're going to say that that represents the stroke because that's going to be the length from where the piston travels from the very bottom to the very top of the cylinder. Now, if you look at the piston diameter, the length of the diameter, that is nearly equal to the stroke length that the piston would actually travel up and down. So this would be known as a square motor, which is basically a one-to-one -one ratio. And the majority of compression motors today are produced as square motors. Okay, there is one more motor configuration that they do have, which is called a stroker motor, and it looks like this. And in this case, the length of the stroke exceeds the length of the diameter of the piston. And in the next clip, it becomes more obvious why they went with a twin cylinder, big bore, short stroke motor. We have a cylinder ring with Teflon coating. This allows for less friction, less... Because the cylinder is so short, it appears that they're trying to limit the amount of friction occurring at the cylinder wall, probably to preserve the Teflon coating in the cylinder itself. And they're doing this by limiting the RPM. In comparison to a standard compressor, it's probably running close to half the RPM. Less wear and less noise. Less wear and less noise is probably in comparison to a motor that doesn't have oil or have the Teflon coating. We have a dual valve plate system for faster air delivery. These valve plates have stainless steel reed valves for longevity, longevity and durability. We utilize a cast aluminum cylinder 
This is for durability. Now, anybody who knows anything about cars, having an old school cast iron block is going to be a lot more durable than having an aluminum block. That being said, my Hermetic DIY silent compressor utilizes a cast iron block. And lightweight. We use an induction motor. The reason we use an induction motor is it does not have brushes, so there is more longevity and less wear. This operates at 1,680 RPM. This is a four-pole motor, which reduces noise, it reduces vibration, and you're allowed to use with less amperage and less electricity. I'm going to show you a half horsepower competitive model. Most of our competitors will have a shroud around their pump and motor. This is the head of the, the pump, and here is their cylinder, and there is their piston. As you can see, they use a very small piston. Now looking at the competitor system, you can see that the piston diameter length and the stroke appear to be more square. When you use a small piston, the air compressor must operate at higher RPM. Okay, now the statement that he just made about a smaller piston operating at a higher RPM in order to achieve the same output, that is not necessarily true unless you're dealing with the same stroke because what he's not taking into consideration is the overall displacement. Now the shaded green area represents the displacement which is basically the volume of air that we're going to be able to move given a certain RPM. Now I had to bring this up because you basically got to read between the lines to understand what they're talking about when they're sounding technical and a lot of times it's just good marketing. Now in this particular example, yeah of course, you're looking at a compressor that is the size of their motor so of course the displacement is going to be smaller. It should be 34 RPM and they would have to run extremely fast and create a lot of noise, vibration, friction and wear. Okay, there's a thing called harmonic balancing. We're not going to get into that. We're just going to call this good marketing. We use the dual piston system, which has less vibration, less noise, and less wear. Not necessarily true. We'll just call it good marketing. Now in the next clip, you'll see a similar setup, which manufacturers are producing to supply 26 gallons worth of compressed air. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this Hush 100 solid air compressor from Chicago Air. Now this air compressor is sold exclusively in Australia uh, through a company called Sydney Tools. My tank is uh, approximately 100 litres they specify. Um, it has six motors and six pumps. What he meant to say is he has three motors and six cylinders. Now the pumps are paired up so there's actually three banks of them or three pairs. Now from an empty tank to a full, uh, full head of pressure Roughly took about three minutes in, uh, in, on this compressor, which I thought was rather quick. Uh, we are talking about 100 liters of air. Okay, 100 liters of air, so there's like 3.785 liters per gallon. So we'll do the conversion, 100 liters divided by 3.785, I believe, equals about 26 and a half gallons. Now keep in mind, my system is running about 29 gallons plus and I'm doing it with one third of what they're doing it with. So one third the horsepower and one third the CFM. And this is kind of the reason why I set my system up utilizing a solenoid instead of trying to run both tanks in parallel because I didn't want to kill the motor. But it's pretty obvious that after seeing this, the setup that I got, the compressor is going to die. It's just a matter of when. I don't think it's going to be appropriate for air atomizing aeroponics running 24 hours a day. I think the longevity is going to be at risk. I think having a big bore short stroke motor is not as beneficial as may be thought because depending on the valve system and how efficient the valves are working is going to determine how much air output it's actually going to be able to produce. Now I got the four year warranty with my unit so when it does fail and depending on how long I've had it and depending on what fails. Um, will determine whether or not I go into this thing and I build this motor up. Now I got this compressor because it was bang for the buck. 
and it was much more cost effective than trying to get another Dan Foss. And outside of that, it was turnkey. I basically don't have to customize anything. It's plug and play. Now that being said, I'm taking the risk so that you don't have to. I hope this video was insightful and was useful to you in some way, shape or form. And if you're on the fence about getting one of these for your air atomized aeroponic system, then I would definitely recommend getting the extended warranty. And if you want to see what happens to mine and how long it lasts, please don't forget to subscribe, especially if you want to see more content like this.